I want you to close your eyes and just think about the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. Surely today is about the love. Not just the love we have for Jesus, but Jesus' love towards us. Just think about the goodness of it. That mercy triumphs over judgment. Yes, Lord. That the love covers a multitude of sin. Yes, Lord. Yes. That grace is sufficient. That mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it. That's the love of Jesus on today. The love of Christ that comes in when the devil said that you are out to take him out. Yeah. You are meant for death, but life and love rescued you. Love saved you. Just think about the love of Jesus. Abba Father, we love you on today. We come not just to shout praises, but God, we come in the stillness of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. Woo. We come to listen to you, to sup with you, Daddy. To hear how you love us. To experience your grace once again. On this Resurrection Sunday, God, we evoke your presence right now. That you will make yourself alive in our dead situations. The things that have pulled us down and held us back. We speak right now. We give it on to you. Uh, knowing that you are God and God alone. Besides you, there is no other. God, we cast down every vain imagination. Every distraction. Every hurt. Sickness in our body. Right now, we cast it down. Down, and we speak right now that you and you alone shall live where we dwell. So God, we thank you right now, Daddy, that this morning you shall bring forth uh, on the dawn of a new day that we shall declare that this is the day that the Lord hath made and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. We, we right now, God, just could confirm your word of our life that we are a living miracle, uh, that we are well in Jesus name that we are adequate huh? you called us you confirmed it and this day now God we celebrate your goodness yes, even over the waters we speak your words of life and truth huh? that your spirit shall resurrect in us once again in Jesus name we pray hallelujah hallelujah and amen come on let's celebrate God right now in this place. praise his family shall praise God even on the beach. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Yeah. I'm elated. I feel elevated today. Yeah. As the sun was rising, oh, all my issues were leaving. As the sun was rising, my praise was becoming oh, big enough for God to come in where the praises were being left out. God, I thank you right now in this moment. And we praise you. We love you. I greet you right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, everyone who's hearing under the sound of my voice. I just want to ask you to come where we are as family. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus in faith. It's not about a building. It's about a people coming together in unity. All of us are in need of a touch from Jesus. Yeah. I believe today is that day. While you're here on the sand, we will be reminded that God is a God over the sand. Yeah. And if it had not been for God holding back the waters, we would have already been drowned and overtaken by so much more. But God is the creator. And we as creation ought to be created in our praise and celebration unto him. If there is a word from God. There is a word from God. I know we coming from the book of Luke. If you don't know what it is in the New Testament, you will hear the reading from it. Luke 24. Luke 24. Luke 24. But on the first day of the week, early dawn, someone said early. early, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Yeah. But when they went in, they did not find the body of the yeah. Lord Jesus. Come on. 
while they were perplexed or confused about this matter, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And as they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember, someone said remember, remember, how he told you mm-hmm, while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, catch it, on the third day, rise. And they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all these things. Someone said all these things. All these things. Not some, not a lot. All these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Catch it. But these words seemed to them an idle tale. Yeah. And they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves, and he went home marveling, astonished at what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. For this brief preaching moment, I would like to use as a subject suffering, silence to shouts. Yeah. Suffering, silence to shouts. God, right now in this moment, make the dead letters of the script come to life. As you embody it right now in the lives of your people, that will make us active in the works and the will of God. I pray right now that you will make it come to life, that the witnesses on this beach will rise up and go off the beach to tell someone of all the wondrous works you've done. God, we decree and declare it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you can see, sit, you can you know, find a seat. If, if not, <laughs> lean up on a pole somewhere. Yes. If you're in a tent, come on out. Come on out. Come on out. So the story began, as we know, on a grueling, gruesome Friday, in which our Lord, the suffering redeemer, went through suffering beyond the man's conception. Our suffering Savior on this Friday seemed less than divine as he was humanely and in his humanity going through so much different changes. And this transition as we see here on the Friday, our Savior was given into the hands of some haters. It's a hellish place to be in the hands of some haters. People who would decide just because they don't like you because of what you're doing, that they would try all that they have to do to stop you. I would say that though he knew what was coming, found himself in a position, not a predicament, but a position that he knew would produce a good reward. So he kept on his journey trekking and trotting, and he kept carrying that tree, which was cursed by the Roman culture, but he found himself in a place that in order for me to bring heaven to earth, I needed to take the sins of all humanity. This Friday, all was wrong. All was seeming like as though the Jesus that we serve, the Jesus that they believed in, was losing in this fight. Yeah. Uh, tap your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you are in the fight of your life. You are in the fight of your life. But Jesus, though he was in the fight of his life, knew he was fighting for the faith huh, of the people who believe in the Father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is something that happens when a person believes without a shadow of doubt in what daddy says yeah. and keeps doing what daddy says even when people around is telling him or her that something is wrong with daddy I'm here to tell you even if you don't see what daddy yeah. has been doing I'm here to tell you if daddy yeah. spoke it it shall be successful yeah. it shall come to pass it shall be set in your life yeah. to describe me he's suffering 
uh, he, it seems as though he's going to lose. And I can just believe that the, the disciples were with him while he was walking uh, and he, as he was trotting his course. Uh, they were wondering how in the world this powerful man that we were following for three years uh, could allow people uh, to just take him. How can they, how can he allow people uh, to just abuse him like that, uh, to batter him like that, uh, to beat him like that? Uh, and then I'm reminded uh, when I look back over my life uh, and I walk through the corridors of my community, uh, yeah. people are questioning how powerful this God is. Uh, yeah. If you are so powerful, uh, how can you allow my mama to die? Yeah. How can you allow grandma to get sick? She was a praying woman. She believed. She fasted. She prayed. Yeah. But God, if you're so powerful, how did you allow this to happen? Yeah. 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 And then it is belief. God, I believe the disciples yeah. question yeah. the divinity yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, he must just really be a, a person from Nazareth because he's not acting like the God who performed miracles yeah. after miracles. Yeah. This is not the same God who turned water into wine. This can't be the same God who healed blind men yeah. and who healed the woman with the issue of blood. This can't be the same Savior who saved people over, over, and over, and over the course of time. But seemingly, he's pleading. Seemingly, he's crying. Seemingly, he's doubting. This can't be my Savior. All right. Help us. But the suffering led to a silence. Yeah. You'll watch it in the scripture. First, the first verse. It tells us that the Sabbath day, my God, and on the Saturday, the Sabbath day when everything needed to be closed down, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was silent. Yeah. So it was not just a symbolic silence, but it was a silence because of the people who believed in the order of how right. things go. Yeah. And so they believed in the silence on the Saturday. But I can also imagine, because yeah. the scriptures show us, uh, that even his disciples became silent. Yeah. Uh, let me remind you of the Peter who walked on water. Yeah. Yeah. Though he started to sink, he walked on water yeah. for that moment. Uh, that same Peter denied our Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That same yeah. Peter who had faith uh, to believe, I will never leave you. I will be with you always. Yeah. St. Peter who decided to pull out a switch. Yeah. That same Peter. Yeah. No, no, he lost some faith. Yeah. Yeah. On that Saturday as the silence cut done to cover the face of the earth. And as the darkness seemed to cloud over and the waves became still, there was something that was happening there. Yeah. That the people who believed, their faith started to wane. You are in good company, beloved. When you find yourself every every now and then, just, oh God, I don't know. I, I really need you, Daddy. Yeah. It seems like things aren't changing. And your faith is being tested. You ought to triumph over that. Because Christ and his disciples had moments of weaknesses. Yeah. It's a scary thing when we preach a gospel huh, and we forget about the humanity of the gospel. When we forget that we are all clay people, formed by clay, and we're walking this thing out, but we are bound to leave some mudges on the floor. We forget that we are clay people, that sometimes we look upon others, and we can't understand why they're struggling with what they're struggling with. Your struggle might not be their struggle, but I'm here to tell you, our Savior struggle, and our Savior was able to show us that there's a suffering that leads to success. Yes. Yes. We cannot negate the fact that the gospel works with people who are idiosyncratic and they don't have it all together. Yeah. They have issues. Every single one had issues. Yeah. That St. Peter had issues. Yeah. Paul, as we know, had issues. Yeah. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Yeah. David had some issues. Yeah. We need not to look down on people when they're in a place of their silence. Yeah. Uh, because it's in the darkness of the moment 
that light break forth. Yeah. It was over the, the darkness in the beginning of the book of Genesis uh, that God spoke over darkness uh, and then created light. Yeah. Uh, it's because of the darkness. Uh, some of us, when we take photographs, uh, it's able to come out just right. Uh, it's because of the process uh, of going from darkness to light that we are then refined by the process. I need you to touch your neighbor and say, listen, it's part of the process. The silence is part of the process. The suffering is part of the process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the three ladies. It tells us at the breaking of the day, as dawn appeared, as the sun started to smile on the face of the earth, these three ladies decided to go down to the tomb and just to minister to something that was dead. Yeah. They went to the tomb to minister to what appeared to be dead. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about the history of these ladies. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James. Mary Magdalene, hallelujah, came from the Isle of Magdala. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Magdala was an island <laughs> that the, the, let's say like this, the excited, oh, exciting dancers lived. Yeah. 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 The women of the night, and they twirled and, and they performed various acts yeah. of entertainment, yeah. and that was their means of supply. And they received their means from their talents of dancing. Magdala, it's, 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 a, it's a jacked up thing that she is defined by where she came from. Ah, uh, come on. Uh, come on. Come on. Yeah. Help us. Yeah. Uh, she is reminded of where she comes from. Her background, my God. Yeah. My God, not only are you black, but you, you, you are reminded from your background what you used to do. Yeah. You're defined by where you came from. Yeah. Bathsheba is not her name. Can I just reference that? A woman bathing. That was not her name. She was identified by an act. In which, hallelujah, yeah. excited the king. Yes, yes. He saw a woman bathing, yes. and she's defined by that moment. Yeah. Have you ever been defined by a mistake that you made? Yeah. Or by a place that you came from? I'm here to tell you that there's some good that can come out of gold. Yeah. There's some good that could come out of Harborview. Yeah. There's some good that could come out of Kennedy. There's some good that could come out of RFPS. There's some good that could come out of the hood. Yeah. 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 And so Mary went to a cataclysmic change and that she now was saved from the possessed demons. She was possessed by a multiplicity of demons. And this sexual desire and the other things that associates with these spirits and demons, she was set free from it. But I like Mary Magdalene because she did not stay there. Yeah. Ah, yeah. she did not receive from God and then leave God. Yeah. She didn't pray and said, if you change this, God, I will turn my life around. And when God turned it around, she turned right out and leave. She followed after our suffering yeah. Savior. Even to the point of death. She ministered even onto his dead body. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Joanna. Let's talk about Johanna. Married in a fluent family. Her husband, who worked for Herod Petrarch, he literally, the husband was a noble man of Herod. He dealt with the finance, he dealt with administration stuff. Johanna, who went through a change and conversion and became a follower of Christ, who if we just 
just know, if you could just think about it, if you change as a, a wife and your husband is working for someone who compromises and does not believe, it will cause some tension in the household. I could only imagine what happened when, Ter when um, Herod found out that his wife, the wife of the person who worked for him, began to follow he who he hates. I could only imagine what went wrong there. But she was set free from the bondage that she was in, and she too also decided to follow after Christ. Mary, mother of James, not, not the James that we know about, the lesser James. This yeah. James who became, got in the presence of God, his life was changed. The presence of God, beloved, changes you. Yeah. If you want change, you need to get in the presence of God. Every addiction that you have, in the presence of God, God can work that thing out and can work that thing through. If you would just get into the presence of God, there is liberty. So the mom, Mary, saw the change in the son. And because of that, she became a believer. Yeah. If someone could change your son, you too will begin to follow that person to see what you did in that small matter of time that I was struggling years after years to impact and influence. What did you do? Mm. Then we see these three women following after our Christ. 51. And we see that they're following after our Christ. And this is what I want us to catch. God was seen by women first. Yeah. All right. When Jesus, my God, our resurrected Jesus, our, our Savior, could have visited some men, but he decided to visit the least of them uh, because culturally the women were least and less of still going on today but he visited women who had a background and a backing that somehow would yeah. block them from the blessings but God said I'm going to use yeah. the least of you to bring you out so that people can believe in the power of my son yes, we ought to praise God because if we look back over our life and think things over, and I don't know about you, but I can truly say that I am blessed. Yeah. I am a testimony. Yeah. I am a testimony. Yeah. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Mm. <laughs> Why are you visiting dead stuff? Why are you going back to the pain of the past? Mm. How can you expect yeah. a great future going back to the dead stuff? Mm. Uh, the stench of the sin, uh, the stench of the sickness, the stench of that good, no good, John who left you broken and you are going back. How can I show you the resurrected life declares the Lord mm. when you are looking for the living among the dead? Mm. I believe some of you right now in some area of your life you have been looking for life among the dead. And God is saying, if you ought to be resurrected through my son, as my son is in you, you ought to look for the living where you need to look for it. Yeah. Your location is off. Yeah. And you've been wandering to and fro. But God is saying, the answer is right there. Yeah. If you will look where I send you, if you will do what I've asked you to do, you will see life and you will receive that life more abundantly. So the ladies went. But they were ministering to something that was dead. But God already knew. And God's plan, hallelujah, was to interrupt their plan. Yeah. Because as they went to 
see our Savior's body, uh, something visited them. I'm here to tell you God is sending an angel, a minister, a messenger of the gospel yeah. to speak a word to you, my God. But catch this, beloved. It's not something you haven't heard. It's only to remind you. Yeah. Look in the scriptures. It says, remember what I told you yeah. in Galilee. I already spoke concerning the situation that I would be crucified, dead and buried. But on that third day, I shall rise up. Oh my God, you need to know yeah. that he sent a word to remind you that you're not too low, that you're not too broke, that you're not uh, too bad, but I have sent the word to remind you, uh, if my son shall rise again, uh, you too can rise up from your low places, uh, you too can stand up and declare, uh, thus said the Lord. Yes, Lord. Our position is off. We've been looking in the wrong places. And then catch this, we've been looking too low. Mm. Uh, Peter stooping down, look through, and he saw the clocks and the linen there. And as he stooped and he saw that, he had to rise up and go and tell and share. He was marveled by what was happening. Because our Savior, my God, though he operates low, uh, he cannot stay low. Uh, that's why he calls you up uh, from where you are. Yeah. That's why he allows you to go through a day of suffering uh, yeah. and a day of silence. Uh, but beloved, uh, he expects you to rise with shouts and screams. Uh, yeah. uh, knowing that you are resurrected uh, because he lives uh, and he does not die. Yeah. He died before uh, and now he lives and reigns. Yeah in you. He has rule and reign and regency in your life. But you have to rise up on that third day to declare what thus said the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Right there, there's a good time to praise God. Yes, Lord. Ooh, it's a good time to praise God. Yes, Lord. Right there, right there, right there. Don't wait for a moment. The moment is now! Praise Him. Hallelujah. 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 Some of y'all still waiting. Praise God. Don't wait on a moment. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and lastly, <laughs> Woo. God, hey God, is doing a new thing. So you need to hear me. God is doing a new thing in your life. It's no cliche. That's the truth. My God, in the Lord's praise, give us this day our daily bread. I'm yeah. here to tell you, your bread is here. Your revelation is here. Yeah. That which you need, the word has been spoken. Yeah. But catch it once again, if you missed it the last time. Remember, yeah, 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 yeah. do not forget the dreams I've given you. Yeah. Yeah. Do not forget the visions I've given you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you dare forget all the times I've laid up in you. It's for you to rise up and do some work. He said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. You were worried about yesterday. Yes, you were silent. But don't be silent by the fact that yesterday you were silent. Yesterday is gone. Yes, you could have spoken. You could have done some things. But God is saying today. Today. Somebody say today. Today, today is your day to open up your mouth and speak all the things yeah. that you've seen. You heard it. He said, go and tell your brothers and sisters. Yeah. I've risen. Javon, have you risen yet? Yeah. <laughs> or are you still waiting for the perfect time? 
before you walk into your call. Yeah. He confirmed it to women at that time who became apostles of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. And they said women yeah. can't be apostles. They saw, they witnessed with their eyes the Christ who suffered and who now come and has come and will come to save. Are you going to rise? Or are you going to wait? God is saying this is the time for you to move out of the former things. It's old. I am doing a new thing. I'm calling you to do evangelism that's wise as a serpent. I'm calling you to do some things that people may say is too liberal, it's too radical. I'm calling you to look different because I'm calling you to be different, says the Lord. I'm speaking to someone today who feel the pulling in your heart. This is time for you now to commit your heart into the hands of God. To say, God, fashion me again. Form me again. Form me again. Because God wants to use you today. 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 Yes, Lord. Today. Today. Right now, today. Not later, but today. Right now, today. God wants to use your suffering, your silence, and he needs you to open your mouth and scream and say, for God I will live, and for God I shall surely die. Yes, Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, my soul. Yes, Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that's within me, bless his holy, his righteous, his magnificent, his mighty name. Jesus has risen. Christ lives in Christ. Shall come again. Hallelujah.